श्री जयदेव गल्ला जी जयदेव जी नो नो नथिंग गोस ऑन रिकॉर्ड थैंक यू सर मिस्टर चेयरमैन सर Thank you sir Chairman sir I rise to support the additional expenditure the honorable finance minister is seeking from the house through the first batch of supplementary demand for grants for 2022-23 and also the demands for excess grants for 2019-20 Sir I will be brief and crisp since time given to me is very little Sir let me start with the issues of my state of Andhra Pradesh first First is the issue that has been going on for the last three years, sir. The farmers of 29 villages who have given 33,000 acres of fertile agricultural land for the development of the capital city of Amaravati have been on a non-stop protest since December 2019, fighting to ensure that Amaravati is made the sole capital of the state, and to ensure that the promises made by them by the government of India are fulfilled. In a few days from now, that is on the 18th of December 2022. We are going to mark three years of protest. There has never before been such a long protest by farmers for their rights in the country, sir. I appeal to the honourable Prime Minister, through the honourable Finance Minister, to announce that Amaravati will remain the capital of AP. I also request her to provide the funds for the development of Amaravati, as all the development projects are at a standstill. Secondly, sir, I come to Polavaram, the lifeline of Andhra Pradesh, sir. The completion of the project will turn our state into a lush green state, full of crops, and also meet the drinking water requirements of the entire state. Therefore, I urge the Honorable Finance Minister to approve the revised cost estimate amount of 55,548 crores, as recommended by the TAC, which includes the cost for land acquisition and R&R for the people displaced due to the project. Finally, through you, sir, I request the Honorable Finance Minister. to release the funds for the 18 commitments mentioned in the ap reorganization act uh, through you sir i would like to remind the government that this is the final budget that is going to be presented before the 10 year deadline that is mentioned in the ap reorganization act comes to a close and therefore all of the commitments legally and the, uh, through the act made by this house should be completed in full by 2020 so the next budget is extremely important for us and uh, the uh, therefore i request the honorable finance minister to start releasing funds to ensure that all the promises made in the act to the five crore people of andhra pradesh are fulfilled in full sir i now come to the supplementary demand for grants and the demand for excess grants firstly rupees 1.09 lakh crores the fm has sought for fertilizer subsidy to farmers this increase in fertilizer subsidy is primarily due to geopolitical reasons and logistics issues that have arisen due to the Russia Ukraine crisis both are major, both are major suppliers of fertilizer to india and the war between them has disrupted the flow of fertilizers this demand is also justified since it is meant for farmers but here i wish to make a point that the honorable prime minister while inaugurating the ramagundam fertilizer corporation is on record saying that we need about 2.5 lakh crores For, for fertilizers if you add the 1.05 lakh crores provision as fertilizer subsidy in the 22 23 budget with the 1.09 lakh crores proposed now it comes to about 2.14 lakh crores so i would be grateful if the honorable minister can explain how she is going to fill the gap of around 36000 crores sir the next demand is about the 30000 crores towards payment of lpg subsidy to o omcs and the subsidy under the pm ujwala yojana this is also a welfare measure which nobody can oppose and hence justified sir on the one hand we have been pushing hard to make india atmanirbhar while on the other hand we are not able to tap the resources that we have i will give an example sir andhra pradesh with nearly 1000 kilometers of coastline is having the second longest coastline in india more than 27 billion cubic meters of natural gas reserves are yet to be recovered from inland and offshore sources in andhra pradesh there are also reserves in gujarat and the northeast the point is if we are able to tap these resources 
we can save huge foreign exchange and also achieve the objective of becoming Atmanirbar. I am saying this because we import 60% of our LPG requirement from other countries. Moreover, some natural gas pipelines have also been conceived, such as the Kakinada to Vizak to Srikakulam, which, is all, which was to be completed in June 2021, but not yet completed. Similarly, there was also a proposal to lay a natural gas pipeline from Kakinada to Vijaywada to Nellur as a part of the government's One Nation, One Gas Grid project. I request the Honorable Finance Minister to clear these from her ministry so that they can be completed as per the schedule, which will help in reducing our dependence on foreign countries, sir. The third major head under which the Honorable Finance Minister sought approval of this House is 16,400 crore for Narega. Well, this also cannot be objected to, since it is also a welfare measure and meant exclusively for the poor. But taking advantage of this opportunity, sir, I wish to make a couple of points on Narega. How long are we going to ask poor unskilled labor to do manual unskilled work, sir? Sri Narendra Modi ji, after becoming the Prime Minister, is on record saying that even after six decades of our independence, we are still making people dig in for their livelihood. Why cannot we provide them skills, sir, so that they can do other skilled jobs and earn even more? I agree that the government of India has started the project Unnati, but many states are not showing any interest in skilling Narega workers. Why is the question, sir? What are the reasons behind this? Secondly, the government targeted to give skill training to 20% of Narega workers who completed 100 days of unskilled work in 2020-21. But only a few thousand have been given skill training in 2021, sir. If there are any issues, I request the Honorable Finance Minister and the Rural Development Minister to convince the states for skilling Narega workers. And if there's any additional incentives to be paid to the workers, the Honorable FM can please consider it. Because in the long run, there will be less pressure on resources under Narega if we are able to skill our workforce and move them away into real jobs, sir. As they will get more money elsewhere using their newly acquired skills. I'm just, just two minutes, sir. The next point I wish to make is relating to the figure fixed in the budget about expenditure. It was proposed in the budget 2022-23 to spend 39.4 lakh crores when compared to 37.7 lakh crores in 21-22. But if one looks at the expenditure in the first three quarters and anticipated expenditure in the last quarter of this fiscal, there's every likelihood of crossing the budgeted figures. It means it is going to breach the physical deficit target of 6.4%. Even though we have better GST collections and we've got about 1.4 lakh crore collections nine months in a row now, I wish to know to what extent will this help in keeping the fiscal deficit at 6.4% because the expenditure may breach by around 1 lakh crores this fiscal year. I wish the Honorable Finance Minister to please shed some light on this. Sir, the Honorable Please Finance conclude. Minister, I'm concluding, sir. I'm on the last page. Yeah. Sir, the Honorable Finance Minister is also proposing to spend about 10% of demands for capital expenditure in railways, roads, and under other heads. Here I wish to point out, and I'm sure the Honorable Finance Minister will also agree with me, that the pace of public capex has come down. I, I'll just finish in a minute, sir. If one looks at the budget papers, it was proposed to spend 35% higher, which was about 3% of GDP, at 7.5 lakh crores, as capital expenditure for 2022-23. But public capex is not picking up. I wish to know the reasons behind this from the Honorable Minister. Moreover, sir, the Honorable Finance Minister in her budget speech at pair number 113 allocated one lakh crores to states for capital investment. The Finance Ministry approved 58,200 crores under part one, but released only 26,300 crores. Under part two, 898 crores has been released, and another part, ministry has approved and released 1,200 crores. Sir, we're at the fag end of the third quarter, and Please not conclude. even 30% was announced in the budget. So I'll just complete I've the conclusion. I'm coming to conclusion, sir. More than you are allotted I'll time. just complete the conclusion, sir. There's no doubt that it's a big challenge for India to sustain high growth rate and lift millions out of poverty. And unemployment is the biggest challenge that we are facing today. Sir, around 12 million people are joining the labor force every year, but we're not able to generate jobs for even half of them. The labor force participation rate dropped from 40% from 46% six years ago. And the unemployment rate is hovering at 7 to 8%. The point I wish to make is it is very rare to find GDP is going up while employment is dwindling. 
So, and I think that India is one of the few countries where GDP is growing, but, but employment is falling. This is called jobless growth, sir. I wish the Honorable Finance Minister to please Shri throw some light on this. Thank you for giving Faisal me this opportunity, sir. Thank you very much.